Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we're not in Edinburgh anymore. This is a, a totally different experience, a wonderful place. We're in Barbados, which has beautiful weather at this time of year. And it's a real pleasure to be away from the freezing cold of Edinburgh in January. So uh, we're delighted to be here. Um, we're here because my, my sister has a little flat here and uh, she's very kindly invited us to stay with her. So uh, we, we feel very lucky as well. And, very privileged to be able to to do this and as, as you can see we're right by the beach and it's incredibly noisy you can hear the surf crashing in constantly so I, I'm hoping that you can hear me this is this is probably the biggest challenge to uh, the microphone recording that we've had so far so we'll, we'll see how it goes and if it's too bad I'll just have to do a talk over at some other time and maybe you just hear me in the beach but oh we've got a bit of a cloud coming on so anyway here we go so we've set up our easel here now and I found this lovely scene of the palm trees uh, at an angle which is quite nice going into the sea and the wonderful surf behind so we're going to give it a go with that. Again I did a little sketch first and I've now transferred the drawing to the piece of paper so now is the time to uh, really have a bit of courage now and make the first marks and get straight into it. It's a nice strong colour of cobalt blue and here we go. Take a deep breath and we'll start it. Right, here we go. Top, top right, top left. So I'm going to try and introduce a few clouds. So it's not going to be just a completely blue scene. Okay, work it all the way across the top of the picture few clouds, maybe introduce a little bit of raw, of raw sienna into it just to provide a nice little contrasting colour, yellow and blue, just to give a hint of clouds. When it's bright like this, we're, do, we're doing it here because um, um, I would normally try and paint in the shade but be, because we're doing a video of this we're, we're, I'm going to try and keep it in the light as much as possible so that you can see it as well as the background. So that's quite important, I think. Okay. <laughs> Splashing the, paint, the uh, painting surface quite a lot. Okay, so that's the sort of clouds in. Looks all right. Okay, I'm gonna think about where to start next part now. I could, could, could do the palm trees, but no, I think I'm going to carry on with the sea a bit just to give myself that whole horizon line. So this, it's, it's quite dark in the distance, so that's quite interesting. Maybe add a little bit of brown as well, just to give it a little bit more depth. And we're going to start it right there and work all the way across. It's a nice blue colour. And then we're going to change that colour. And the next, the next sort of layer that it has is an emerald colour. So I'm going to dip into my Viridian. And I'm going to add that in. Okay, I hope you can hear me through the real roar of the sea. It's incredible, incredible how loud it is. Now, I, I want to introduce a bit of a wave now. So I don't, I don't want to paint in everything. Uh, I need to keep the white coming back. 
and then the foreground, I want to have the little blue effect coming in here. So that's the beginning of the sea. And it's really coming up over my ankles now. I never quite know when it's high tide or low tide here. It always seems to be the same. Not like uh, England or Scotland where they've got huge tides. Anyway, so that's, that's that part done. So now I'm going to change that brush and I'm going to make a, have a little bit of a smaller brush. Okay, so I'm going to start painting the palm tree now and I'm going to start with the, with the trunk and that will give me the best, best feeling of shape of this. And it's a sort of silvery, sort of a silvery brown, I call it. So, right, let's, uh, let's try and work from the bottom. And try and introduce this, this shape. I think of everything as shapes, really, not... <laughs> um, and my, my job is to place down shapes onto the, onto the piece of paper. So that's that one in. And it becomes wider at the bottom. So uh, introduce different colours. I always like introducing different colours into pictures. Even if I don't necessarily see them, I like to see changes of colour. A bit like Van Gogh, really. He, he would, he would uh, introduce colours that weren't really there. It's always interesting going to a new place because you're full of uh, trepidation and thinking, well, I've never painted a palm tree before, so how is it gonna, how's it gonna occur? How am I gonna paint it? And then the next palm tree's over here. It goes behind and it comes out to here. So those are my basic tree shapes, trunk shapes in. Yeah, which I, I think are fine. Now working the way towards the top of it and where the, where the coconuts come. So I'll introduce a few shapes. Quite like the blue color I've got on that. That, that really worked out well. Okay. To start the actual shape of the leaves. Now, the colors. Um, I think a bit of Viridian, some of that in there, and yellow, and blue, there's so many colours in these things, they're absolutely gorgeous. So there's a, I'm not, not going to paint it um, detailed, so I, I look at it in, in the same way that I paint uh, a portrait really, or hair, and I'm looking for masses of colour rather than uh, rather than um, strands of colour. Lots of shapes coming in. So I'm building up the general shape of it rather than trying to focus on every in individual leaf. coming over here and I always want to change color with this so I'm going to introduce a bit of cerulean blue and ultramarine so they'll they'll get the the more shadows coming in or maybe just ultramarine and blue real feeling of light and a shadow I remember I always try to paint the shadow area a blue color Lots of colours coming into it. Now, a few browns. Got a brown area here. Dark. Okay, so that's the masses done in. Now I'm going to introduce a little bit of, uh, of, of detail, but I, again, I don't really want to overdo that detail. So, greens and blues. So to try and have a close look at what I'm trying to paint and then try and put them down. So there are lots of little stabby, stab sort of shapes coming in. So we always have that time issue. So you've got to get it done before the light changes. Maybe introduce a little bit of red in there now. So there'll be a few mauve colors coming in now. 
So still working at the second, uh, on, the, on the second palm tree. I'm going to introduce the, uh, the yellower leaves. which do really do seem a lot yellower. Especially in the, the seaward side. It's one of the fascinating things about painting plan air. Um, and it, it's, it's so amazing because you, you have to make the decisions now. You can't wait. Um, you, can't, you can't delay things. So you have to develop an immediate style. And that's a, a, a really wonderful thing to do. And you, you get the painting done now. So you, you, if, you, if you go out, um, let's, let's say you go out on a trip somewhere, um, the amazing part of, of uh, painting uh, plein air is that you actually come back with a picture instead of a photograph. Which I think is much better. I give it a little bit more of a darker bottom. How about a better mauve in, a, in there. I don't see any mauve, but why not? This is the cobalt violet that I sometimes use. Very rarely used, but I don't use put much of it in there. Okay, and a bit more blue. Underneath there's one more trunk I'm going to put in, and that's the one that's been snapped off. So I'm guessing that's sort of around about here. A little brown. Remember, change the colour again. Into here. So try. So there's a sort of speckle the effect of the roots behind here. Um, sort of here, coming in. Um, a mass of, of root systems coming out. Now, the, the, probably you're getting a lot of sort of light coming and going when you're watching this video, but uh, that's just the part of it. When you want to watch, when you see someone painting outdoors, this, this is what it's really like, and it's, it's certainly not like a studio presentation of it. It is, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, light change, um, and there's a lot more to challenge you, but that's what makes me excited, really. Okay, there's the light going in again. So Tani's doing her best to keep up with the light today, uh, which is a challenge. But she's doing very well. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll see what happens at the end. We're going to try and go down into the, into the sandy section now of it. I just had a wave coming in and it enveloped the tripod. And the tripod sank a bit, so it definitely went down about two inches as the wave went back out again. Now the next part we're going to do is, is the, the foreground part of it. And so I'm going to, I'm going to use um, raw sienna and yellow ochre. So I'm going to try and introduce the sand in it. There we go. I quite like the sand, the sea coming quite up to the picture. That's really, I find that quite nice. So a little bit of, of it's almost like a, a reddy sort of colour. It mixes with the, the blue water, mixes with the, the yellow sand, and it creates a, a bluey red, I think. Oh, <laughs> we're parked under a tree here at the moment, so there's a fair amount coming down. So that's the, the, the sand, the wave coming up this, the, the, uh, the steep shelving shore. Okay, that's okay. Now I'm going to try and introduce a wave here, so I've got to look quite carefully at a wave to see what to, to see what it looks like. Um, again, the, the, the uh, that was a nice wave. So that it goes quite green here. You've got to really carefully look at these things. Let's get a bit green here. So I'm imagining the surf coming in over the top. And then more waves come in here. And the sort of foam on the top. 
Now what I see in the distance at the moment is a little boat. So as it's here now, I'm going to pop it in because I don't know where there's going to be another boat later on. I think it would just fill up a nice little hole over there. So here goes a little boat. I'm going to pop it here. Here's the boat coming in and I will use some white paint at this afterwards but I'll, I'll just pop it in here okay. just to get the essence of it in so I know I know where it was. Okay, so that's where the boat was. Right, now. So I'm gonna start on the other side now again. So I'm gonna pop back to the um, sand and um, try and introduce something there. So back to my raw sienna and, and yellow ochre. It's quite a light sand. One of the difficulties of painting in full light, I may have mentioned earlier, is that you can't really have very good judgment of, of value. It's all a bit of a guess. But um, I'll, I'll, as I said, I normally, I'll normally try and do it in the shade, but sometimes it's just not possible. So we, we have to uh, sort of mend and do with this. But I'm happy with it. Okay. So there's another palm tree over here, which I'm going to put in right here. In there. And maybe another one in the distance, but it's a, the one in the distance is quite interesting because it's further away and there's a bit of spray. It's a little bit bluer. So uh, I'm going to indicate it a little bit. I suppose it gives it that sense of it's a little bit of a distance away. Amazing shapes. Very different painting here than in uh, in Scotland. Uh, the, the paint dries out so fast, or well, the water just dries off almost instantaneously. So that's that changes things too. I guess every time you go to a different place, it's, you've almost got to fine tune yourself into how to how to cope with the situations. But that's the fun of it, really. Try a little really small brush on that now. See where I can get some finer. Because it's further away, the detail's been compressed. So, uh, big brush, big area. Little brush, little area. So I'm going to try and get some smaller brush marks coming in. Hundreds and hundreds of little marks. Right, so working, working by the palm tree again, there's a little um, hedge there, which I'm going to put, pop in. And then there's a little wall. We've had to put a little cover over the camera because it's, it was absolutely roasting. So I don't want to break the thing. Now at the far distance there, there's a sort of boat which I'm going to put in. So right over here. Sort of yellowy, orangey color. Roof. That's going over the sea. Here comes an even bigger boat now, which I am going to put in. Okay, I'm going to get into the base of the stump of the tree now because they're quite an interesting tone. It's sort of spread into the into the beach, pushing it, creating almost like a shadow coming in. So now what I'm going to do? I'm going to put some shadow in of the of the trees. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue and cobalt blue and maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson because because it's hitting the sand it's picking up a bit of warmth from the sand so these are going to be placed sort of here so so if 
So this, this is the shadow of the trees cast on the sand. All the way along. So I'm going to go now into varying the sh the, the the colour of the sea a bit. It sort of it sort of ripples and changes of colour everywhere. Maybe into the wave. Just trying to introduce that variety. It's where the, f the foam is frothing. So lots of twigs in the front, in the bottom left. I'm going to try and indicate quickly. Lots of contrast and shape in these twigs and they provide a nice bit of uh, variety to the plain sand. And now this much darker. I'm right, just going to add a little bit of colour to the sails of the boat, just to give it an idea of there's something there. And the one over there. Few bits of white in the froth, white up here, just to give it a bit of sense of the froth of the water coming in. Darting around the place a bit with the white paint. Don't want to overdo it. Just, um, just a few spots. Seems to have almost run out of white paint. <laughs> I must squeeze out more next time. We'll get some more. Right. Okay. So the rain has just come down, and I've grabbed the painting off of the easel, and I've come under this little roof here to finish off the painting. So. You can see you have to really think in your feet with watercolour. So it's really almost finished anyway. It's just a, just a few uh, little patches of colour that I'm going to pop in. Uh, no, nothing, nothing that amazing. Just to try and finish the, the water off. Give it a little bit of colour. A few marks. Just to give it a little bit of interest. And there we have it. So. That's my little watercolour painting. So it was, it was a quick painting really, and not, not too long. I would have liked to have a bit longer on it, but uh, I don't think that, there's been a lot of, a lot of showers here, so we're, we're, we've had to run inside from time to time. So anyway, there he is. Hope you enjoyed that, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the change of scene as well. Um, hopefully you can feel the heat that's here. Uh, there we go. Anyway, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks very much, bye bye.